Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and this is a really exciting video because we're going to be finally digging into this brand new series of this awesome new project, the Multilingual Book Club, which I've been dreaming about for years. I announced this project a few weeks ago, so if you haven't seen that video, I do recommend checking it out. It'll be up here and linked down in the description. But essentially, we're all going to be having a book club together and I'll be reading books in different languages all throughout the year and Basically, I'll try to choose books that have been widely translated into lots of languages so that as many people as possible can either read the book in a language they're learning or you could read it in your native language. And there's a very good reason for that second one. First of all, if you just want to have fun, if you want to participate, join in. You shouldn't be excluded if you're not quite at that level yet to read it in your target language. But also, as I discussed previously, even if you read the book, in your native language, there is a second part to this project, which is that we will be using Journaly, my foreign language journaling platform, to actually write our reflections in the target language you're learning so we can get feedback, comments, and help each other along. So even if you read the book in your native language, you can still get immense language learning benefit from then journaling and writing in your target language. So that's all to come, but you know, this is the first episode of the series after the announcement. Now, we're not gonna start reading just yet. As I mentioned previously, I'm gonna give everybody plenty of time to get the book and any other materials, maybe prepare yourself. So we'll probably wait another week or two before we actually begin, but we can still start discussing things like our setup, right? What materials am I gonna be using? What are some other options? And we can also start talking about my approach, right? How do I plan to approach this? And how might you plan to approach it depending on your preferences? So I just wanna say really fast that the whole point here is yes, community building and enjoying doing this together and all the language learning benefits and all the just profound personal benefits that come from reading if you enjoy doing that. But most of all, the reason why I originally thought of this project years ago was because I failed so many times to read a novel in foreign languages. So I tried in Japanese and in French, a whole bunch, and I eventually got there. But there were so many times I just didn't manage it. Sometimes I didn't get past the first 10 pages, right? And yes, it's challenging, but I think the main reason why I failed is I didn't know how to approach it. I didn't know what options I had. I didn't know what I liked. And I didn't have a support group or a community. I didn't have accountability, any of these things and so most of all, this is about creating a support community. And I believe if this project is successful for me, that means that potentially thousands of people this year who may have failed or not even started could successfully read their first novel in a foreign language. And it's such a profoundly, you know, fulfilling and pleasant, delightful experience that if we can help so many more people succeed in doing that, I would just be over the moon. And so today we'll be discussing my sort of ideal setup, the setup I'm gonna be using for this book. And I'll try to also discuss things in a flexible way. I wanna make sure I, you know, account for the fact that in some languages, some of these things may not be available. And really quickly, first of all, I do want to say cheers. Like, happy language learning. God, this is just so much fun. But also, I'm really bad at doing this. Um, please do consider liking this video, maybe even subscribing or leaving a comment. But also, an important announcement for this series is that on my Patreon page, which is turned into a wonderful community. Um, I'm gonna be sharing all of my notes, all kinds of stuff from all these books. So as I read this book, La Sombra del Viento, and every other book, I'll be taking a lot of notes and experimenting a lot. And so if you are a cappuccino or a latte tier supporter on Patreon, you'll get access to all of those resources. It's gonna be really fun. So on my Patreon page, I have the espresso tier, $1 cappuccino three dollars and latte at five dollars so cappuccino or latte will get access to all that stuff but of course everyone gets access to my weekly language learning diary videos all kinds of cool stuff extra interview material monthly q a session all kinds of stuff but anyway let's jump into the actual topic 
content. In case you can't tell, I'm really bad at doing these like self-promotional things. So let's talk about my setup. So I am going to be having, of course, the original or just whatever the target language text is gonna be for you. So in my case, that's Spanish. I have that as a, you know, paperback, but of course it could be any format you want. Now, in my case, I also have the English translation on my Kindle, right? And it's really cool because of the Kindle, you, you could use anything you want, but Kindle has, you know, an app for the iPhone or whatever phone you have for your laptop, your tablet. So the cool thing is that wherever I go, I can always have at my fingertips that sort of native language for me, or maybe you call it support language available as a reference. And in my case, I'm very lucky for this book. I did find that there is also an audiobook available in Spanish. So for me, the perfect setup, if this is available to you, is having the target language text, your native or support language text, and an audio version, right? That's ideal. Now I do recognize that not everyone's gonna have all those things, uh, especially the audiobook. I'm not sure how many languages that's available in. But now let's talk a bit about why, but I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I wanna keep these videos nice and short and snappy, but we'll have several videos discussing all the details of the methodology and the approach. But basically, you know, there are two large branches that you could go here. Now there's so many layers to this, but very broadly speaking, you could, you know, choose to read in your target language first, and then secondarily in your support language, or you could choose to read in the support language first and then afterwards in the target language. Now, there are many approaches here, so I'll discuss that later. For example, you may choose to read in your target language and use a dictionary whenever needed, things like that, and you might only use the support language text as a reference when you really need it, but you might also have them side by side and do sort of parallel reading. So many different methodologies and approaches, we'll discuss that later. But in any case, um, all I wanna say is that reading in your target language first is gonna be more challenging, right? Because you're gonna be taking in every piece of this story for the first time in that target language versus of course, reading it in your support language first, then you get that advantage of having that context, right? You know what's gonna happen, so you can focus more on the language specifics in the target language. So I tell you that in this video, mostly just to illustrate one important point here, which is that you wanna have options. I think that one of the secrets to success in this project is going to be having a variety of methods, a variety of approaches available to you because you may change, right? So the way that I begin reading this book might change by the end of it, because again, this is gonna be a really challenging experience for me. And so that's important. And so that's why I like having this setup. At the very least, having your you know, native or uh, support language text and the target language text, if possible, even the audio, because it gives you a full range of ways you can approach reading this book. Because honestly, the most important thing, I think, for us together doing this, let's try to help as many people finish as possible. And it doesn't matter if maybe halfway through, you decide to just finish it in your native language. It doesn't matter because so much of this is about you tried, right? You, you actually took in a story through the lenses of language learning, even if a lot of that was just referencing it and writing journaling posts in your target language. It doesn't matter. Let's try to help people finish. But I think before quitting and giving up on something, there's a lot of sort of gradations there. And a lot of this is just, let's make sure you have lots of different approaches. So if you come into this understanding, all right, I'm gonna read in my target language first, and I'll reference the support language. If it gets too difficult, it's really helpful to understand, like, oh, I have other options, maybe now, I'll read in my support language first, and then I'll switch over to the target language, right? And there are many other techniques. And you know, having the audio, if it's available, it's great because, you know, you could, for example, listen to the audiobook version afterwards. So maybe once you've read one chapter, maybe you're on a walk doing something, your hands are busy, listen 
to the chapter and see if you can understand it, right? You could do it backwards. You could listen first, test your listening comprehension, then read it. You could read while listening, right? Which is really interesting. Um, or you might just want to reference the pronunciation of certain things. So I'll leave this one here because I don't want this to get too long. Like I said, I'd rather have lots of short videos that just dig into each detail of the process. But the idea here is let's document this journey, the ups and the downs, and let's try to give everyone as many tools as possible in terms of methods and different approaches. Okay, everybody, I can't wait for this. I'm so excited. I'm a little bit nervous and that's normal, right? This is gonna be challenging, but it's gonna be fun and I can't wait to see all the participation. So if you haven't already, please feel free to go to the link in the description where you can actually sign up for this project. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video where I guess we'll start talking about different approaches that you might take.